By popular demand, let's talk about how you pick an engine. This video is likely not going to give you the steps that you're imagining it's going to, and I suspect it's going to make a few people angry at me, but we're gonna try it twice and see if I can get my point across. Let's go through a flowchart. So question one, do you already know an engine? If the answer is no, let's move on to the next slide. If the answer is yes, have you shipped with it? If you've shipped a game with it, then my recommendation is to use that game as the basis of your engine work. Not that engine, that actual game, because it contains all of the things necessary to ship a game. And if you're thinking, but the game that I'm making now isn't very similar to that game, I would recommend that you watch my most sarcastic deck ever video, because I bet it's a lot more similar than you think. But if you haven't shipped a game with the engine that you know, you probably still want to use it. That knowledge, that learning that you have there, still probably worth taking advantage of. Okay, are there political pressures to use a specific engine? If not, move on to the next slide. If there are, and you are within a large organization, or you are working for a publisher who is putting that pressure on you, then I'm just gonna say, sorry, suck it up, and use that engine. Do you just want something to play with? No, this is a career, this is, you're looking for a game to ship, well then move on. But if yes, if this is a storytelling game, then I would recommend something like RPG Maker. It's gonna get you up and going fast, and it lets you experience game development without having to learn all the intricacies of everything. Is this a mobile title? If the answer is yes, use Unity. If the answer is no, then is it on a ton of different platforms? I mean platforms beyond the current generation of consoles and the PC. If the answer is yes to that, use Unity. If the answer is no, move on to the next slide. Does this game need the new graphical hotness? Does this need to be the coolest, awesomest, flashiest thing in the entire world? If the answer is no, then use the current version of Unreal. If the answer is yes, still use the ver current version of Unreal. You do not want to be trapped behind a potential new release that could get delayed, that could slow your development down as you wait for Epic to finish off their latest version of Unreal. So there you go, very simple flowchart. But let's take another cut at this. Making a game is kind of like chopping down a tree. Different games are different sizes of trees. That tree represents how much content you need to create. A game engine is like the handle of the ax that you're using. It matters, but a lot of other things matter too. And a lot of other things probably matter more. Switching engines when you already have an engine that does what you need it to is like throwing out an ax because you see a cooler handle. That ax head represents all of the tooling that you do in order to ship your game. If you don't do any, then yeah, you're basically chopping down a tree with a stick. And switching engines is go for it. You've, you've not really done yourself any services with whatever engine you're currently using, so you might as well. If you do a little, say 10% of your technical budget, then you've done something. You've stuck a chunk of metal on the end of that stick, so you're basically trying to chop down a tree with that sledgehammer. But if you've done enough, in my experience for RPGs that are very content heavy, it should be at least 30% of your technical budget. You have an axe with a sharp head. It might have some burrs on there. So rather than throwing that away and starting again with a stick, why don't you spend that effort to sharpen that axe to make that experience better? It's not the sexy answer. It's not the answer that gets you an opportunity to play around in the newest, coolest bit of technology that's out there, but it's gonna get you running faster and it's going to let you make content quicker because every game requires custom tooling. RPGs in particular require a lot of custom tooling. And if you already have that tooling done, why would you set it aside? Sticking with the ax metaphor, an obvious question might be, well, can't you just take the ax head that you already have, that you've already built, and put it onto a new handle? 
And honestly, that's a good thought. The problem is, is that in this universe, the axe handles don't all have the same shape. So you might have an axe head built for a square handle, and now you have to reshape it to fit onto a triangular handle. And that's possible. And you can do that. But the cost of doing that can be a lot higher than it might first appear. So while it's doable, and it's certainly something to pursue if you find yourself changing engines with an established tool set, an established pipeline, custom tooling that you're happy with, it is more expensive than it's going to first appear. And don't get sucked in to underestimation on that effort because making tools designed for one engine work on another is going to be quite a bit more difficult than you might first imagine. Now I know that nobody's gonna to listen to me here and I know this is not the video that people expected when they said, how do you pick an engine? But this is the video you're getting. Hopefully somebody out there will listen to me and stop throwing axes in the garbage. You know what, I'm enjoying this analogy. So why don't I name the other parts here and line them up with the game development process. The axe head, that's your tooling. The handle, that's your engine. The tree or log represents the amount of content that you're making. And the person swinging the axe, that's your team. There are opportunities for optimization on each of those things. You can help make your team better at swinging that axe. You can give them training, you can buy them better gloves to protect their hands. You can help them become more muscular and you can change the tree that they're cutting down. You can make it smaller. You can change the kind of wood that it is. All of these are possible when you're making a game as well. To go with an extreme example, a game that's running as a live service isn't really cutting down a tree with an ax. It's more harvesting a field of hay with a scythe. You're still cutting down plants with a metal tool, but you're cutting down a lot of plants that are much smaller, much easier to deal with on an individual basis. The amount of individual plants you're cutting down is almost infinitely larger. So the tooling you want for something like that is substantially different than what you want for something where you're cutting down a single tree. Hopefully this reached at least some receptive ears. If you found this useful, or even if it gave you something to think about, or even if it gave you something to argue against, think about giving this video a thumbs up so more people can see it. A special thanks to my members. They provide resources that help keep this channel running. If you're interested in becoming a member, there's a link in the description. I will see you again soon. Thank you.